The year was 1987, and a man by the name of Mike Soldano, or as I like to call him, MS for short, built what would become the very first SLO 100 amplifier, the Super Lead Overdrive 100, which would forge a new path into uncharted territory for guitar amplification for years to come. The raddest decade of all, the 80s was the high point for civilization. Life was totally tubular, and if you didn't like it, you could eat my shorts. You would often hear Valley Girls say phrases like, gag me with a spoon. As if, you're such a wasteoid. Fashion trends had reached a pinnacle. Movies were top rate. The Quarries were America's heartthrob, and Val Kilmer looked like this. Television programming was award-winning. Commercials spoke to the American people. And of course, popular music was never better. Whenever I wasn't busy riding my BMX bike, practicing nunchucks, rewinding videotapes, filming a home movie on my parents' state-of-the-art camcorder, or learning the latest breakdancing moves while listening to my Walkman, I was dreaming. Dreaming of a day when rock music could simply sound better. Up until that point, all we had were bands like Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, Pink Floyd, The Rolling Stones, Kiss, Whitesnake, Metallica, Van Halen, all garbage. MS saw that that wouldn't do, and he went on to develop a new kind of amplifier, one that didn't suck. An amplifier that was thick and girthy in tone, long and hard and sustained, and dropped creamy smoothness into your ears, whether you wanted it there or not. 36 years later and here we are, I give you the SLO. What is going on today, guys? I'm Jay, this is an Ibanez, and this is a Soldano SLO 30. It's a little brother to the Soldano SLO 100. Uh, there's also a mini, but I haven't checked that one out yet. So this is a nice smaller form factor uh, compared to the 100 series. And it's basically the same amplifier, only it has two less power tubes in it, so it's a little bit quieter. Otherwise, it's essentially the same, but far less expensive. So uh, this is the one to go with, especially if you're the bedroom musician or you're just playing at home in your home studio. Do you really need the 100 watts? You know, it's your call. Uh, I found that this is perfect for me. So the track you just heard there was all using this. I double tracked the rhythm and then I had the lead down the center. So for the rhythm tracks, I was utilizing the normal channel in crunch mode and then the leads were in the overdrive channel. Essentially, this amp is a three channel amp. Uh, you can toggle between the normal and the overdrive channels with the foot switch if you want to. And then while you're in normal channel, you can have um, clean or crunch mode. So essentially it's three channels all together. They all share the same EQ and they just sound great. So we're going to cycle through all the tones here real quick for you so you can get a sense of what it you know, really sounds like. And yes, I will start with the cleans so that you can you know, better judge for yourselves if you like this. So um, first off, we're going to go normal channel, bright switch down, off essentially. And uh, here's your clean tones.
So that right there again was with the bright switch all the way down and the gain at just about 10 o'clock. So if I turn the gain up a little bit, you can get those edge of breakup tones that you might be looking for, which is really nice too. So let's do that now. And the bright switch is up to engage. If you want to boost it up a little bit more, you're going to get a little more dirt. So let's check that out. Uh, cleans are nice. I like them a lot. Uh, let's go to the crunch mode of the normal channel now, and it will be significantly louder if I don't touch anything. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds good to me. Uh, I found for the rhythms in that you know demo track, I had the volume, rather, I had the gain knob dimed all the way up, and I boosted it with the Tube Screamer TS9, uh, you know, gain on zero, level on all the way up, and tone to suit, and uh, you kind of get that. <laughs> Is it genty? Uh, a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could say, you know, somewhat. And, um, you know, I'm not really even tinkering with the tone knobs right now. Just kind of have it set it and forget it kind of deal. So we're just gonna make this quick. Uh, camera card was full, of course. So here we go again. <laughs> So that's the crunch channel, bright switch engaged. Uh, let's turn the bright switch off real quick to, just to compare that, same riff. And now we're gonna switch over to the overdrive channel, which sounds very similar, but it does still have its own distinct um, tones to kind of differentiate it just a little bit. I think there's more compression too involved. So. Uh, Everything else is the same. Volume, about the same too. And that is with the overdrive channel in uh, at about, I don't know, 10, 11 o'clock, let's say. And uh, the Tube Screamer is engaged. So without the Tube Screamer, let's hear that. Everything else is the same. You know, I find that you kind of do need a uh, drive pedal in front of it to tighten it up a little bit and just kind of pull some of the bass out of your input signal. But uh, otherwise, this thing sounds really good. The, the gain structure is really nice. And if I do push the overdrive gain up a little bit without the Tube Screamer engaged, let's hear that now. So, so that's at noon right there. It's a little bit woofy, but it's not terrible. And let's push it up a little bit more. Yeah, 
yeah, it starts to break apart at that point, and I'm now at like two o'clock on the dial, but if we engage the tube screamer, it'll clean it up again, so let's do that. <laughs> Not bad, and that's without any uh, noise gate in front of it either. So for again for the lead channel, or rather, so again for the again for the lead tones that I used in the demo track, I was utilizing that channel. Uh, the bright switch was up, and uh, but the gain was not nearly there. The gain was kind of more that like between um, three and four o'clock on the dial there. So it was kind of like this. <laughs> And uh, just for flavor, I threw in the uh, DD3 for a little bit of delay, and uh, you get this. So there you go, the SLO 30 by Soldano. This thing sounds great, and uh, quite honestly, I couldn't ask for more. This thing uh, really does deliver the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s type tones that you're looking for. You know, again, it's not for the modern, super tight, super gent, percussive rhythms, that's something else. But anything else this thing can do, and I'm uh, having a lot of fun with it, this is gonna stick around with me in the studio for quite some time to come. I do wanna thank uh, Zounds.com for providing this amp so I could demo it for you guys here today. Check out Zounds. I've got an affiliate link down below in the description box. Doesn't cost you a penny to click on it. Check it out. They've got these in stock. You're going to love it. You already know what it is, man. Soldano. Come on, right? This thing is a designer branded, basically, amplifier. It sounds amazing. I really do truly believe that this is going to be one of my favorite amplifiers for a long time to come. That's it for today, guys. This was a quick one. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I am giving away a guitar when I hit a thousand subscribers. So if you are subscribed, uh, you will be one in a thousand. That will be your chances of winning that guitar. Check back soon to see where we're at. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. That's all for today, guys. I'm out of here. See ya. Fashion trends. <laughs>